What is going on, Jerome's? Happy Monday morning, an absolutely bat bleep insane week 15 slate. Now, this season has already set records in terms of the number of close games, just the way the NFL wants it. Drama every single game, every single week has just been just been insane. And for us Vikings fans, obviously week 15. <laughs> Weeks, week 15 just hit a little bit different, but I mean, this entire week was from start to finish has just been phenomenal. So this is from NFL Research. Uh, through a wild Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday of NFL action, 12 of 15 games were decided by one score, and all 15 games were decided by 11 points or fewer. Uh, both those marks are tied for the most in a single week in NFL history, entering Monday night. And the Ram Rams of Packers probably not going to be Garbaggio. Hopefully not. Hopefully the Rams find a way to win. It's going to screw the Packers. But uh, we got 10. 10 uh, things that we learn uh, from this absolutely just... <laughs> Just amazing week. Uh, number one, pretty, pretty, pretty good. So uh, Thursday night, which also seems like nine years ago. Uh, so the Niners went into Seattle. They got a win, 10-4 and four on the season, secured the NFC West. Brock Purdy, 217 and two touchdowns. And we, we said at the time, um, um, like a month ago, where the, the Niners aren't built around the quarterback per se, where Jimmy G was really was the game manager just trying to get the ball to McCaffrey and then Debo when he was healthy, and then that defense takes care uh, of itself. But San Francisco is good. San Francisco is tough, and uh, the Vikings need to stay ahead of them for the two seed um, for a potential divisional round matchup, be in Minnesota versus San Francisco. But, I mean, yeah, Brock Purdy, uh, re respect. Mr. Irrelevant no longer. He's just operating the offense, is doing what Kyle Shanahan wants him to do. And now it, it's going to be an interesting scenario this offseason because Jimmy G is, well, Jimmy G is going to get a, a fistful of money from someone uh, around this league. And what happens with Trey Lance? Do they, ro do, do they literally roll Brock Purdy? I don't know, man. It kind of creates. Next up, number two courts yes insanity now generally we don't include the vikings games and 10 things that we learn because we talk about the vikings all the time but i i still i still have not mentally processed what the hell happened just how bad the first half was 33 nothing and then the vikings roaring all the way back and also the impact of officiating on the game where the vikings probably should have won by two touchdowns but it is what it is and it's just it, it really has been a season of those type of games for the Vikings. Just heart attack every single week. But we love it. And now, obviously, we'd like to win every single game 50-3, to three, but is what it is. Next up, number three, uh, Snowball's Chance in Hell. So this one was a lot of fun. The Dolphins 29, Bills 32. I mean, Josh Allen getting it done again, 304 and four touchdowns. But just the atmosphere. Just that that prime time atmosphere. You have Bills Mafia getting after it. You had you had snowballs hitting the field. Ah, uh, if there's any more snowballs, it'd be a 15 yard penalty on the Bills. So if I'm if I'm a Dolphins fan, I'm just like pfft, chucking it all out there, man. But this was a hell of a game. Uh, Bills come out ahead at the end uh, to a degree. So some more questionable officiating on some of these calls and non calls. But you know, I I I have. I actually have like a, a theory that the league doesn't mind controversial officiating because it, it gets people talking, right? I mean, uh, I mean, officiating is is going to be a conversation all all week long on sports talk radio at the water cooler, and I don't think that the league to a degree minds being in the in the spotlight like that all the time. Number four, you had one job bears, I mean, freaking a man. So the Vikings were thinking like, okay, still an outside chance at the one seat if Philly just falls straight on their ass, but. I mean, once again, you know, people complain about the Vikings winning these close games and sort of tiptoeing through the tulips. But what about the Eagles? Hey, congrats for only beating the Colts by one. We beat the Colts by three. <laughs> and then, of course, this game, too, where I don't know. I don't know. Like the this was quintessential Bears this season, where Justin Fields goes off. He has 95 yards rushing, has a thousand on the season, puts up big numbers, and the Bears still lose. <laughs> That's exactly what happens, man. But uh, a day where Hurts threw two picks in the first half, he was kind of off, and I don't know, like Philly just got it done, or Chicago just couldn't capitalize. I mean, I'll, also, uh, I know it was windy, but how do you punt from? Well, they punted from their own thirty-four or thirty-one or something ridiculous like that. Uh, speaking of tiptoeing through the tube, so Lions do it again. Going on the road against our guy Rob Salah, Rob Salah, and that fantastic defense. But I mean. Just an absolute wild ending to this game. So uh, the Lions were down 17-14. It was fourth and one from midfield. And then Jared Goof uh, hits like the backup tight end for a 51-yard touchdown. 
And, and then Zach Wilson, who I mean, Zach Wilson is an experience. Like he, he threw a couple boneheaded picks early in the game, but he he just drilled an absolute dime down the field. Uh, the Jets ended up missing the potential game tying field goal, but. It was just wild. It was just wild again. But now the Lions, 7-7, seven and seven, firmly in the NFC wild card race, especially with Seattle slip and fall and they can't get up, and uh, as well as uh, the commies losing. Yeah. How about them Cowboys? Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah, speaking of losing. Uh, and speaking of close games, so the, everyone talks about point differential, but as the Cowboys lost to the Jaguars and uh, how the Cowboys only beat the Texans by four last week, so now they have a negative two uh, point differential against the Jaguars in the Texans' last two games. How does it feel? What's that like, man? All right. So they blew a 17-point lead to the Jaguars and also just a walk-off pick six. <laughs> this game had everything. I mean, just as a, a, an objective fan watching some of these games, it was just wow. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, because, I mean, uh, the the I mean, the Browns-Ravens game in the middle of the day Saturday was just a turd, but... I mean, how would you like on Saturday? Bookend between the Vikings, Colts, and then the Dolphins, uh, Bills game. Uh, and then this one is just just crazy. Man. We haven't even gotten to the best ending yet. Crazy. Seven, Chiefs survive again. So, again, the Chiefs sort of tiptoeing through things. Or is it that the Texans are actually pretty tough? I, I mean, the Texans have lost to the Chiefs and the Cowboys in back-to-back -back weeks by a combined 10 points, which – Overall, it's pretty good, and we've said, I, I do believe that Houston plays tough for Lovey, but they just don't have that talent. But, I mean, for the for Houston, excuse me, for Kansas City, I mean, McKinnon, our guy, Jet McKinnon, just calling game in overtime. It was a lot of fun. I mean, this one was back and forth, and actually the Chiefs were, were down at, at times in this one, so it, it's just crazy. Uh, but I, I, I can't take it anymore. So the craziest one... <sighs> I, I understand recency bias and being prone to hyperbole. I mean, that that's a, a trait in all of us. But this was the most insane ending that I have ever seen. So it was tied 24-24. And the Patriots ran the draw with Stevenson. And they were planning to do the laterals and try to get into the end zone and blah, blah, blah. But And then Jacoby Myers, the, the, the Patriots stud receiver, just decides to randomly lateral it to Chandler Jones, who... Of course, where's the silver and black? And then uh, and then Chandler, you know, brother of John Bones Jones, he just pile drives Mac Jones and then runs into the end zone for a walk-off. Well, I, I guess it's a fumble, isn't it? Yeah, a walk-off fumble six. <laughs> it's just... Uh, I, 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 I was just flabbergasted. Where, <laughs> I, you know who had to be the most surprised? Chandler Jones. Just getting that that football and then just running it in, but wow, uh, wow, wow, wow! And then this one, all right. So Tom Brady and company were up seventeen to three, and then the Bills or excuse me, the, the Bengals scored thirty one straight. <laughs> Joe Burrow throws four touchdowns in the second half, and you know we, we said that the Bengals are are going to be tough. I mean, they're they're reigning defending AFC champions for a reason. Joe Burrow's never lost uh, against Patrick Mahomes. Heads up and. That offensive line is starting to get things together. The defense is sort of opportunistic. And, of course, Burrow and Chase, I mean, you're going to be good to go there. But also, uh, how would you like to be the Buccaneers where you're 6-8 and eight and you're still leading your division? <laughs> and Tom Brady may have his only losing season in NFL history. Like, if the Bucs lose another game in these last three weeks, that will be Brady's first losing season ever, which is just crazy, man. Uh, and then lastly... So Sunday Night Football is okay, but it, it was just marred by more bad officiating. It really was. Down the stretch, uh, as Washington was trying to get get um, you know get a tie game out of this, where I mean the no, the non calls. Oh, oh, by the way, we, we even missed the, like the the you know, the Cuban Cole catch in the in the Raiders game, which I think that he barely made it in. I mean, a lot of people are making a big deal about the chalk, but if you look, there's chalk all over that end zone. So I don't know, uh, but. Just the non-calls, the, the whole scary Terry being lined up, even though he checked with the line judge twice, it's just, it's just tough, man. It's just tough. But, yeah, this is sort of an ugly, like, throwback uh, NFC East type game. Oh, Kavon Thibodeau, by the way, absolute stud, absolute monster. Had himself a score, had himself a couple sacks and tackles for loss. But this, this, was, this week was just absolutely amazing. Just absolutely amazing because obviously as a Vikings fan, it was great. But just as an objective appreciator of NFL football, I think mean, these games were, wow. 
I mean, how did they do it? How did they do it, man? But it's exa- exactly what, what the league wants. Close games, drama, insanity, all over, man. Uh, but that's it. Uh, that's 10 things that we learned about week 15. Uh, let us know your thoughts or our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Must support the work. Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.